Hacking IL2 CPP games has never before been simpler than with Melon Loader. Melon Loader allows you to run your own C Sharp code inside an IL to CPP game. This makes it almost trivial to enumerate objects, change their properties, and call their methods. The integration of both MGUI and Harmony X allows for rapid GUI development and very simple method hooking. So, what is IL to CPP? IL to CPP is a Unity scripting backend that aims to provide wider platform support for Unity games. It's an acronym that stands for Intermediate Language to C++. It takes your C-sharp code, converts it into Microsoft Intermediate Language, and then to C++. IL to CPP unintentionally makes hacking Unity games a little bit more difficult since C++ code cannot be accurately decompiled and doesn't preserve symbol information. Luckily, IL to CPP games ship with metadata that can be mapped to game code, allowing you to examine a game structure. Alright, so to install Melon Loader, you can head over to the GitHub releases page and download the newest version of the installer. Now open the installer and browse to the directory containing your game's executable then click it and press open. You can leave all of these settings as they are and press the install button. Now if everything works out, you can press the OK button and Melon Loader should be installed. All right, so now that we have Melon Loader installed, I'm going to install a Melon known as Unity Explorer. Unity Explorer is an in-game GUI that lets you explore scenes and objects, execute code, hook functions, and a bunch more cool stuff. So to install Unity Explorer, you can also download it from the releases page, and you want to make sure that you get the right version. Since I am using Melon Loader and I'm hacking an IL to CPP game, I'm going to download this one. Now browse to your game's installation directory and make sure that you've executed it at least once. And then installing this Melon is as simple as just extracting all of the files into the root directory of your game. Now if we open up the game, a UI should appear, and if this doesn't appear, you can press F7 to spawn it. So I've arranged my windows just to show you a little overview of what Unity Explorer has to offer. Over on the left we have the Object Explorer where you can view the game's structure in a sort of tree view. And we can click on any of these objects to bring them up in the inspector. And the inspector will let you view a bunch of information about the actual instances of these objects. We can actually write and execute c -sharp code down in this console, and if we click this little hooks button up here, it'll bring up a hooks window, and in this window we can search for a specific class and enumerate its methods. Then we can click this hook button and edit right here, and we can actually write a custom hook from right here within Unity Explorer's GUI. And this is super useful for just prototyping your ideas and messing around, and you can toggle them right here with this on off button. Now Unity Explorer is a tool that's worthy of its own discussion, so we may revisit this in the future, but I'm going to leave this as a general overview and get back to the main topic. So how do we actually start hacking using Melon Loader? Well, first you need to open your game's installation directory and browse to the Melon Loader Managed folder. And you can open up any of these libraries in DNSpy. So in DNSpy, we can actually begin the reversing process, but IL2CPP games will still be lacking code. So a good chunk of your time will still be spent in here just trying to figure out what you think something does, or what it looks like this class is for. You're kind of at the mercy of the developer's naming. Like if you have a method called the method, taking 20 different arguments, that could be doing anything and you won't be able to tell really. But if you have a function called add score that takes an integer, you can be pretty sure that this is going to add this integer to your current score. So browsing through these dummy DLLs is part of the puzzle, if you get what I mean, but it's not the full picture. We still might have to resort to something like a debugger, so I'm going to show you how to load IL2CPP symbols in IDA. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is download IL2CPP Dumper, which is a standalone tool that will generate those dummy DLLs that Melon Loader generated for us, but it will also output script files for both IDA and Ghidra. And once you've got that downloaded and extracted, you can go ahead and execute it. And you need to browse to your game's installation directory. Now choose gameassembly.dll and then browse to the game's metadata. Now open up gameassembly.dll in IDA and let its analysis finish. Now browse to file, script file, and browse to the directory of your IL2CPP installation and choose IDA with struct or IDA with struct pi3 depending on your IDA installation. Now select script.json and IL2CPP.h. 
Now once the script is finished executing, it's going to auto-analyze once again. I would wait until it's finished, and then you should be good to browse through the methods. And as you can see in my functions view, it's gone through and it's named all of the functions that the dumper was able to extract symbols for. And this is going to make reversing these methods much easier. Now the first step to developing a melon for an IL to CPP game is to make a new Visual Studio project of a C Sharp class library. Now you can name this whatever you want, but I'm going to leave it as it is, and you need to make sure that you're choosing .NET Framework 6.0. Now you need to link the melon loader binary to your project, so to do that you can right click dependencies and press add project reference. Now browse to your game's installation directory and go to melon loader, melon loader .dll. Now if you don't see a file called assemblyinfo.cs, you can right click your project and press add new item and click this assembly information file. Now click add. And in this file, we need to give Melon Loader some information about our mod. So I'm going to paste in this template from the documentation and change it to fit my newly generated class here. So I need to change this using to class library one and this type of to class one. Now the rest of this information is pretty self-explanatory. So I'm just going to leave the defaults here and save this file. Now we can close assembly info and we need to make our class inherit from Melon Mod. Now in our mod's main class, we can override some of these callback methods to get our code actually executing the game. Now I'm going to override the on initialize melon event to write a simple hello world mod. Once you've built your mod, you can find it by right clicking on the solution and opening it in the file explorer. And it should be output in bin, your configuration up here, and I've left it on debug. And scroll down until you see your mod's name. Now copy this file and paste it into your game's installation directory. And as you can see, hello world was printed successfully. Alright, so I've written a little example melon here that I'm going to go through line by line and describe what's different. First of all, I had to add a reference to Harmony, Game Assembly, and the Unhollower. And that just gives me access to information about the game's structure and allows me to use Harmony, which we use down here for method hook. And in this hook, I'm defining the method that I want to hook in the class that it's located within. This is a prefix hook, which means that it will run before the actual target function does. And I want to modify the result so I get a reference to the result. Now I set this result and I return false, which means that we don't continue into the hooked function. Now because I can't show you any copyrighted assets, I've written a little test down here, which will actually call the function and we'll be able to see if our patch has worked. So let me build this. And if I execute the game, you can see that the patch applied successfully. If you enjoyed this video, a like would help a lot, and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. If you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalog of content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.